Okay, next I'm going to go through some of my kit that I'm taking. Uh, sadly, I couldn't, or oh, I forgot to uh, film all the stuff that was going into my paddles um, box. And um, so there's a lot of stuff that I've missed there, unfortunately, but um, I can go through some of that when I get back. I basically are using a Jackson Sweet Cheeks uh, cushion. And what that does is help me out on expedition trips. Um, and it also was used to pack in between my wing paddles. So um, I've got that, what I do is I put the paddles together and then uh, inflate the sweet cheeks um, and then uh, wrap it up in cellophane and make sure it's all nice and tight so it doesn't get damaged. Anyway, so here's the stuff that I'm taking with me or a selection of some of the stuff. First of all, we've got a Marmot Ultra Elite 30 degrees long. That goes down to 0.6 of a Celsius and um, only weighs 905 grams and it's quite small. Uh, in there is a decathlon pillow that I use, which is either a four, a four class uh, type of pillow um, and it's called a helium pillow and that is in there because I don't want to be looking for it. That all goes in a dry bag and is labelled up. Boom. When I go to bed, I need to dry, dry out and uh, swap my kit over. So I have got a towel somewhere, I don't know where it's gone. Um, and I'll go into my dry kit. So I've got a really thin base layer top, dry underwear, and then I've got some leggings, some thermal leggings that I've used for ages and I know that they're really good. And I've got merino wool socks. I'll be going for like um, 18 hours solid. So having six hours sleep, I need to be as comfortable as I can and you need to be dry. So as you can see, I have a dry kit bag and that is where all that will be kept in there. You mustn't mix your wet and dry stuff. So this is the wet kit I'm wearing. So I've got a, uh, a peak, I think it's a tour light hoodie. So this is a really nice jacket with a really good hood on it. Um, and just what I need, very thin, very light, just a thin layer there. Uh, what else I've got is I use, I can't remember the, what they're called exactly, but these are, oh yeah, Journey, these are, Palm Journey trousers, the same again, they're kind of like really, really lightweight. So that is my sort of wet outer layer. It does pack up really, really small. I can't do it one handed. But you imagine how that, what I tend to do is tighten it all up and then I wrap it in um, electrical tape when I go out so I can save space. Um, got a Factor 50 long sleeve, always use a long sleeve top when it's sunny. Um, it's expected to be about 27 degrees at the moment out in Whitehorse. Um, so it will go from that and then it could just hammer down with rain and um, drop the temperature down by 10, 15 degrees because of the um, Arctic rain or would have been snow that's obviously melted coming down. Um, shorts, and I wear shorts um, so that if I get cold, I can just put these layers on top there. Um, if I get really cold, you have to, because I'm sharing kit, which is a bit of a naughty thing to do, mix your dry and your wet, as I said, but I can wear these if, it's, if I'm getting hypothermic and I can wear this um, if I wanted to. Plus, on top of that, in my other kit bag will be, um, in this dry kit, will be my clothes that I arrived in. So it'll be um, lightweight top and a, and a wicking top. So I've got loads of clothes, including the fleece as well. Um, shoes. I love these, these are Merrells. So if I hold them up to the light, you can see there it is all the way through them and they're brilliant. Uh, they've got holes all inside. They've got Vibram soles and basically you can just wear those and the water will pour out, keep your feet relatively dry. Um, however, what I do is I use, these are rolled up at the moment, but I use um, reed do these wading socks. And uh, Mike and I have found them really, really useful. So these are folded up, obviously, rolled up, ready to go. Um, and in there, are the uh, I've got like um, special wicking socks that they sell with reed. So these are really funny. They're like stockings, but um, so what, what we do is we, you can see the tops of it there. They go up above the knee, so you can put the socks on, put these on, put your feet in the shoes, obviously. And then you, when you're wandering into the kayak, the water will drain out and you've got dry feet. That's it, so it's like a poor man's version or a, a crafty man's version of, of dry trousers. However, 
because it's likely to be hot, I can just roll them down around my ankles so my legs are all exposed. I've got really lightweight shorts. Uh, it's, you know, it works. I've, I've tried it and it works. It looks ridiculous, but we don't care. <laughs> no one cares when there's no one to see you. Um, moving along, I have a, um, a hat, like a Legionnaire hat with a big flap on the back, uh, detachable. So you can take that and use it as a normal hat. Um, all factor 50, so that's my normal stylish, not hat, and the bit that goes behind it. I have another reed base layer hat, um, like skull cap. That's really cool, that's really good. It warms you up really quickly. Here, it rolled up in here, I have a um, uh, seal skin hat with ear flaps, and it is lovely and warm and totally waterproof which you can combine. You won't need to combine it with that, but you could. So if it absolutely hammers down, your plan is to put on your waterproof top, uh, maybe a mid layer if you need it, put that hat on, hood up, job done, and then you're in your happy place. I've got elasticated wrist guards because of the amount of time and you can see my tiny little wrists. Um, so they, they cinch up elasticated wrist guards and they will help um, keep my wrists in place, even though I've reduced my feather, someone might find this interesting, like Oscar Chalupski says, reduced my feather on my paddle down to uh, naught degree. So my wrists, instead of having to rotate uh, my wrists for the, to account for the feather, I don't need to do that now. So I've minimized my movements. Um, I use Mrs. Palmer's wax, just in case um, sometimes the paddle blade gets slippy. Um, I've got a mosquito net because it's needed in the summer and I have reed pogies again everything's all wrapped up just to sort of show you a little bit of space that it, it can go into uh, so the pogies here are brilliant they're so light I can hardly feel that it's like a couple of grams it's ridiculous oh nearly forgot and I just use cheapy because it doesn't bother me uh, this works as well anything factor 50 because I just don't want anything uh, to be burnt so like I say long sleeve top um, which leads me on to gloves. Don't usually wear gloves. Uh, sometimes I get a callus in the, you can see the scars on my hands there from paddling. Um, I've worn these when I paddled from Swanage to Alderney, which is why they look a bit moth-eaten. And because I've worn them and I didn't have any calluses, I'm taking them. Well, why wouldn't you? I'm just trying to find another pair, but these are well-worn, but they're like, I can't remember, they're really thin material because I hate gloves, to be honest, but uh, they're useful. Uh, spoons, obviously for my ration packs, um, which I will show you quickly, are in here. So I will be taking Expedition Foods ration packs, which are 1,000 calories. Uh, they weigh, the dry weight on that is ridiculously light, is 173 grams, and um, so nearly 200 grams with the packaging, and it only requires, this one's quite a lot actually, but 400 mil. 430 ml of water, some are a lot less, um, so that's quite quite good, uh, and the spoons are really nice. Um, I will be using <clears throat> a buff, uh, just to seal any gaps in my neck if I get too cold, I probably won't even use it, but it's so light, um, it's good backup for lots of things, even if you want to use it as a cloth or a hat or something silly. And then finally, my tent. Um, I research loads and loads and loads and loads, and really fussy, really fussy on my research. Uh, and I found this. Um, now, the reason I've got this is it's semi-geodesic, which means obviously it will be able to put it up in a car park, for example, without pegging it out. And the reason being out there in the Yukon, there uh, is gonna be limited places to, um, to stop. So you just have to make sure that it will stand up. You don't wanna to have to peg it in and it collapse or something, so you take that risk away. So this one is the three, and I got this one because I wanted some space so me and well, Mike and I could have some space and as you see by the picture we've got um, our own little bit either side and we've got our own door so if he needs a wee or if I need to nip out or whatever I won't disturb him. Um, it, the best thing about this tent is that it's got two poles. It's got a red and a blue and you just put one up and then the other one up and it will just sit up like that. Um, it's got a hydrostatic head of something ridiculous like uh, 10,000 um, it weighs 2.67 minimum and the maximum weight is 
four. Um, and I love it. I just think it's amazing. It is quite big, but um, I've obviously practiced stuffing it back in here and it goes in perfectly. And um, yeah, you make your own choices. I would rather have a tent that when I'm tired, I know I can put up and will stay up um, and is waterproof rather than skimping on weight and say, I've seen people who've sort of said, oh, I've got one for two kilos, but I know they're, they're not really, really robust like this. They're a bit thinner, so you, you run that risk. Um, anyway, so that's that. That's all my dry kit.